Flying mounts are cool. Whether they're a dragon, drake, horse, or even a slobbering dead thing, the rarer they are, the cooler they are. Mounts that drop from bosses are nothing new, starting in Strathholm with the incredibly sought after Death Charger's reigns and continuing through to dungeon bosses in the latest tier as we entered the Shadowlands. Blizzard often reserves some of the most beautiful models for raid bosses though. With so many mounts to get, it can often be hard to know where to start, so we thought we would make things simple. Here are the 10 easiest rare mounts that you can farm every week, starting from the hardest down to the easiest. Disagree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And first, some honourable mentions. The 4 AQ40 mounts are exceptionally cool, but they can only be used in the dungeons themselves, so from us, it's no bueno. If you're lucky enough to be your realm Scarab Lord, then you understand just how many heads can be turned by this sinister model. The Black War Mammoth is an incredibly easy mount to farm, with 4 bosses that drop it from Winter's Grasp. Unfortunately, it's a bit ugly, and there's a chance that the Winter's Grasp raid won't even be open to your faction, so we're not including it in this list. And finally, Mimron's head is one of the coolest mounts of all time, and this former 100% drop chance is easily a first rotation choice for most who have it. The dungeon, however, is a slog with 12 bosses required to get through, so we're not including it here. With that in mind, remember to like, comment and subscribe to stay in the know. And now, for the top 10 raid rare mounts ranked from hardest to easiest. Number 10. The Abyss Worm. Tumor Sargeras. Drop rate, 5%. This mount cuts a sharp image as it crawls, slivers and slides its way through the world. To get it, you're going to want to use your Dalaran Hearthstone and head to the Broken Shore. From there, jump into the Tomb of Sargeras raid, kill the ever-charming Goroth and his fishy funster friend Harjatan and head down into Mistress Sazanin's lair. The fight won't give you much of an issue and can be completed on any difficulty. This once unique model now uses the same frame as all of the Mindworms from BFA, but personally, we think this one is cooler. The fact that this is from the Tomb of Sargeras certainly adds to its rarity, as most people are likely to skip this boss if they can and head deeper into the raid to confront Kill Jaden. Having been released in Legion, it hasn't had the chance yet to gather the same amount of reps as some of the other steeds on this list. Number 9. The Antorin Charhound. Antorus, the Burning Throne, drop rate 1%. Another Legion raid sneaks into the top 10, but this time we're looking towards Antorus, the Burning Throne. You're going to want to head to the new Dalaran via your Hearthstone again and travel over to Argus via this teleporter. If you didn't play during Legion, you'll need to unlock it by completing the quest Uniting the Isles, a link to which is in the description. The hardest part of this raid may just be the journey from Hope's Landing to the raid's entrance, as you traverse a lake of caustic fire like Mario and Luigi, only with more fell and brimstone. The mount drops from the second boss, the Antorin Charhounds, who should give you no problems at all. If you face them on Mythic, remember, you need to kill them at the same time, lest one of them go back to full health. I received this mount at the end of Legion, and frankly, it has to be one of the coolest and most unique models in the game. A purple reskin can be found by getting the meta achievement for the raid, but we're not about that here. We want easy, and trust me, powering through Antorus achievements in 2020 with an ambivalent punk is anything but easy. Number 8. The Reigns of the Blazing Drake, Experiment 12B, and the Lifebringer's Handmaiden. Dragon's Hole. 1% drop rate each. We've included three mounts here, which is absolutely cheating, but it's our list and we would be mad not to recommend you run this whole dungeon. The conclusion to Cataclysm, an expansion that remains in the shadows of its two predecessors, Dragon Soul sits out as a raid that is gorgeous, if not a bit bloated with story. To get to this raid, you're going to want to head to Stormwind and take the portal to the Caverns of Time. Whiz on down to the Dragon Soul raid, put it on heroic difficulty and start clearing. One note. The dungeon can bug and may require a refresh to properly trigger heroic mode necessary to receive the handmaiden from the last boss. Check the links in the description to learn more. The truly lazy can stop at Ultraxian and get the Experiment 12 B-Man if you're lucky enough. However, if you want to get to the Lifebringer's Handmaiden and the Blazing Drake, you'll need to battle through the Spine of Deathwing encounter. Even in 2021, this can one-shot absolutely anyone who enters and doesn't know what they're doing as you get flung from Deathwing's back, so do your homework. We've concluded a guide in the description. This dungeon is exceptional fun and a run through history, so we recommend it goes in any Mount Farmer's rotation. Number seven, the Smouldering Egg of Milgazor and the Flame Talon of Alice Razor, 1% and 2% drop rates respectively. Once again, we've included two mounts, but this time we're heading to the Firelands. For my money, these are two of the coolest mounts that have ever been added to the game. Ragnaros made one of the most hotly anticipated returns of 2011, Dwayne the Rock Johnson of course aside, and the unique layout of this dungeon was a bright spot in an otherwise grim expansion. 
from Stormwind take the Hyjal portal that sits to the northeast of the city. Towards the south of Hyjal sits the monolithic raid. Kill each raid boss in succession and take care on Lord Ryolith, as he can easily bug. You're going to want to melee his legs in succession until he bursts out of his shell into his big yellow form, otherwise he has a tendency to run away, bug the instance and make the run invalid. Shanox is also a bit of a shy egg too, so kill some of his mates first and he will soon come running. A few trash balls to do it, if you've got multiple people split up it doesn't matter who you attack. Boasting one of the boldest designs in the game, the flame talent of Alice Razor is one of the reasons that Fireland remains one of the most rerun legacy raids to this day. Number 6. The Reigns of the Astral Cloud Serpent, Mogashan Vaults, 1%. We are into the easy dungeons now, but the quality of the mounts are not going down. Pandaria gave us many, many aerial options, the signature series of which is the Cloud Serpents, that come in a million different variations. The Astral Cloud Serpent takes the format and turns it on its head, giving us one of the most jaw-dropping mounts on this list. Elagon and his astral cousin from Rafa Lich King, Algalon, bring the ethereal into a game that is otherwise very might and magic, and the former of the two is a boss we're looking at here. To get it, you're going to want to take the Jade Forest Portal from Stormwind and fly over to the Mogashan Vaults in Kunlai Summit. Once you're in, there's nothing that should give any trouble to a level 60. Follow the dungeon through to the Elagon encounter and bask in its glory. I can't quite put my finger on what it is about this mount, whether it's the otherworldly quality, delicate nature, or just the fact it evokes feelings of a celestial nature, the Astral Cloud Serpent is at its best in the game's more interplanetary expansions. Number 5. The Spawn of Horridon. Throne of Thunder. 1%. The Isle of Thunder, where this mount drops, was Blizzard's first shot at giving us a new area that focused on a lot of cool systems, ideas and cosmetics, setting the stage for Mechagon in BFA. But these days, it's largely abandoned. At the top of the island sits the Throne of Thunder, an often forgotten but intriguing dungeon with a couple of unique moments. For this one, we are focusing on the spawn of Horridon, as the dungeon is a bit lengthy and requires a bit of know-how to make sure you're getting to the right place in the quickest time. To get there, you're going to want to take the portal from Stormwind back to Jade Forest and fly to the Kassarang Wilds. There will be a portal there, right at this point on the map, where you can get to the Isle of Thunder. Once you're in, nothing's going to give you trouble again. You're going to want to plough through the first boss, kill the second, and, if you're lucky enough, collect your mount. If you do have the time, we recommend continuing through the winding dungeon. Just be wary and do your homework first. The mount itself is a fanciful throwback to a forgotten era of dinosaur mounts. Did you know, for instance, that one of the game's first raids, Zorgarub, had two mounts that dropped from it, a tiger and a raptor, that some people on this list ran every day for years and years, and even though they kept going and going, it never ever dropped. Okay, 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 that's not important, but seriously, dinosaurs are cool, so this one calmly takes its place in our rotation. Number 4. The Ashes of Alar. Tempest Keep. 1.7%. The mount that started it all is still one of the most sought after 12 years down the line. It's lost some of the shine that came with its one-time rarity, but that does not devalue the beauty of it at all. This was Blizzard testing the rare mount format and getting a resounding yes from the player base, and the fact that people still run it every week all these years later is a true testament to its beauty. Everything from the unique frame, the way it glides, and the striking palette, twinned with the fact that it leaves a trail of fire as if to say, look at me, I am a better person than you. The fact that it dropped for me for a second time as I was recording for this video perhaps demonstrates that the mount is no longer as rare as it used to be. Nevertheless, it still has the ability to turn the head of any new player who hasn't seen it before. To get there, head to Shatra from Stormwind and fly to Neverstorm. Zone into the instance and take your first look at the end of the corridor of the eponymous mount in all of its glory. The fight with Kelfast at the end of this dungeon is mental for sure, and not the last time we'll see the fella. Prepare to see Kelfast again in a video about the top 10 mounts that drop from dungeons ranked from hardest to easiest. Number 3. The Blue and Azure Drakes, the Eye of Eternity, 5%. A double hitter here, stemming from the raid's original incarnation as both a 10 and 25 man version. If you've been clearing in order of this list, you may have already seen this raid after a cheeky cameo during the Dark Soul instance. This one and done boss is incredibly easy to kill, which honestly takes some of the shine off of Malagos' insane power in the lore. Perhaps one way Blizzard managed to put a bit of respect on the Hearthstone legendary's name is by giving him two of the most beautiful Drake mounts from the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. In hindsight, vehicle bosses such as Malagos were never going to catch on, 
but this relic to a lost time is still interesting and the raid encounter is objectively stunning from a purely visual perspective. To get there, take the portal to Old Dalaran and fly to Borean Tundra. It's that simple. The double chance at the mounts is a bonus and both of these count towards the green drake so they are well worth pursuing. Drake mounts as a whole are oversaturated. You can get two for free in Sarfarian's Lair. The red and bronze drakes are pretty easy to get and if we're being honest the proto drakes were much cooler anyway. If you get these though, they are more than worthy of their place in your collection. They have a certain magical charm that draws parallels to the power of the boss that drops them. The Anixian Drake. Anixia's Lair, 1%. Deathwing's Daughter was the first raid and the original scrape of a dragon in the world of Warcraft, so it's important that we pay lip service to just how iconic this model was. From being one of the game's original iconic memes, Hello Leroy, all the way to her re-release in Wrath and the eponymous Dragon Queen's appearance in Cataclysm, there are few characters with their talons in so many expansions. No two ways about it, we're in the easy farms now. Take the portal to the Caverns of Time, fly north for two minutes and one-shot everything in there. Just remember, even groups left side, odd groups right, and uh, watch out for that flipping tail. This mount gets a lot of bonus points for being one of the few rare mounts that is exact same model as the boss it drops from, give or take a few small tweaks. Despite the amount of innovation that mount design has gone through, sometimes it's impossible to beat a bit of iconography. Number 1. The Fiery Warhorse Reigns, Karazhan, 1%. That's it, we've made it. Number 1. When it comes to looks, we didn't exactly save the best till last with this relatively cookie cutter model being far outdone by most on this list. It does however remain a cool mount and a nod towards the first raid that I ever entered, so it's close to my heart. From Stormwind you're just a stone's throw away and Ashman sits as the first boss in this dungeon. It could not be easier. Well, that's it. The 10 easiest raid rare mounts that you can start farming today. Disagree with our list? Let us know in the comments. We're always looking for new ideas and content, so feel free to tweet us at Diana's Boys EU, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to be in the know next time we put together a guide like this. Thank you.